data scientists at ING. Give them a very warm welcome, please. Did I get it okay? So it was March 2013, while living here in the Netherlands, my father called me. Did you read the news? He asked. I had no idea. In my homeland Cyprus, without any notice, they have closed down the banks and kept people's money hostage. But how will you open the restaurant on Monday? Or even, how will people buy food? The situation in Cyprus was definitely the result of a domino effect. When I left home back in 2004 to study abroad, the island was booming. This situation, nearly 10 years later, seemed incomprehensible. More, seeing my friends and family in the middle of the financial crisis and its consequences, it really struck me. How did we end up here? How many wrong decisions must have been taken in the process? Having studied statistics, I tried to answer this with a more statistical mindset. I thought that if we want to have well-functioning markets, it requires, without question, good decision-making, which can be enhanced by good predictive models. Since then, I couldn't stop thinking about how predictive models can help financial decisions. So irrationality is an expensive bug. The ripples from the crash of the US mortgage market in 2008 were still being felt five years later and more than 10,000 kilometers away, bringing the banking system in Cyprus to a halt. Like Androniki, I come from a country with a long history of financial instability. Growing up in Argentina, I lived through several financial crises and became fascinated by trying to understand how the economy works. As soon as I came across the first macroeconomic models, I was hooked. Throughout university, the models got more and more sophisticated, but the assumptions behind them more and more unrealistic. By the time I got to graduate school, it was all about rational expectations and efficient markets. But then I started working in banking and found that this is sometimes a better model of how markets actually work. Now, irrationality has become part of mainstream economics. Let's listen to the last Nobel Prize winner explain the global financial crisis as it appeared in the movie The Big Short. Okay, Selena has a pretty good hand here, showing 18, dealer showing seven. That's a really good hand for Selena. Good odds. In fact, your chances of winning this hand or 87%. So, my odds are good. I'm on a winning streak. Everybody in this place wants to get in on the action. How could I lose, right? Now, this is a classic error. In basketball, it's called the hot hand fallacy. A player makes a bunch of shots in a row. People are sure they're gonna make the next one. People think whatever's happening now is gonna continue to happen into the future. During the real estate boom, markets were going up and up, and people thought they would never go down. So people who are watching and think that I won't lose will make a side bet. So as you have probably guessed, the Nobel Prize winner was the one on the left, the father of behavioral economics, Richard Thaler. Now, the great insight of behavioral economics is that we are irrational in predictable ways. For example, we all suffer from confirmation bias, a tendency to seek information that will confirm our pre-existing beliefs. Like the hot hand fallacy, 
these cognitive bugs have been confirmed through ingenious experiments in the lab. Our brains evolved to distinguish what we can eat from what can eat us, and to predict who within a social group of around 150 we can trust. Not to calculate the distribution probabilities of thousands of prices on the fly. The rationality needed for good decision-making in finance is simply beyond human intelligence. But when decisions are made with our money, we want them to be rational. Now, AI gives us, as never before, the opportunity to close the gap between the way that we would like to make decisions and how we actually make them. We tend to think of AI in terms of human intelligence. We are impressed by systems that can do things we do without thinking, like recognizing a face, or that beat the best of us at something that needs a lot of thinking, like playing Go or chess. But this is anthropomorphizing, which is usually not a good idea, and not only because computers don't like it. In finance, and perhaps in other industries also, AI may have the highest impact by going beyond the automation of what we can already do. It can cover our blind spots and assist us when our intuitions go wrong. Whether you consider AI to be superhuman or not on its own, embedded in our decision-making processes, it can certainly give us superpowers. So today, Andronik and I are going to take you through our team's vision for Katana a tool we have developed for professionals in the, in the bond market to make better decisions. So to start, let's take a bird's eye view of the bond market. Bonds represent the largest share of assets in our pension funds and are the primary source of funding for governments and large companies. So a well-functioning bond market is critical to allow the transformation of savings into productive investments. So what is a bond? Well, if you know this already, please bear with me, because understanding the basics will help paint a clear picture of why AI can have such a huge impact here. So bonds are debt instruments that can be easily traded. Let's say a car manufacturer needs financing for a plant. It can ask a bank like ING for a loan, or it can issue bonds that the bank can sell to investors. Now, the investors, after the bonds have been issued, may want to trade some of these bonds with each other. And traditionally, the, the investor would pick up the phone and call their preferred market maker, who would provide a quote and then instruct the sales team at the bank to call other investors and find one with the opposite uh, uh, trade. The system is based on trust. Over time, market makers and investors learn who on the other side is worth sharing information with. But the market has been shifting from voice to digital. Information that was confined to the memory of a handful of individuals now travels at light speed in binary code and can be used by anyone behind a computer simultaneously. Investors request quotes from multiple market makers at the same time, and in turn, market makers advertise their prices to the whole client base in real time. Automation has accelerated markets, driving us to make ever faster decisions with information that becomes old almost as soon as it is created. And this is a problem. As Daniel Kahneman, another Nobel Prize winner in economics, has shown, when we think fast, rationality simply gets much harder. But where human intelligence fails, artificial intelligence thrives. While we perceive this, in, this explosion in data as noise, for AI, it is an opportunity. Our vision at ING is to go beyond traditional banking and empower people to stay a step ahead in a fast-changing world. AI is central to this ambition. So our journey started 
by looking at our own decision making. And we developed our first Katana tool to help our market makers quote faster and sharper prices. By the time that a request for a quote hits our screens, Katana has already gathered all the relevant history about that bond, scanned multiple real-time sources, merged all these into an intuitive visualization, and added a prediction of the winning price. So when our traders use Katana to quote, they win 20% more trades, they are second best 20% more frequently, and their prices are 20% sharper. So seeing the impact that we could have, we decided to take a step further and develop a tool to help our clients in investment management with their most important decisions. What to sell from the portfolio carried over from the day before, and what to buy. Now, asset managers typically will follow a vertical process, combining a top-down approach with a bottom-up approach. Top-down to map out how changes in the world will affect markets, and bottom-up to determine the specific impact on a given bond. So Katana enhances the investor's insight by adding a horizontal approach. In this way, it can slice through all possible options to signal what requires attention. But with AI, we can think differently and go further. For us, it's actually easier to compare one investment opportunity to another than to value each on its own. So Katana goes through all the possible bond pairs, taking each buy and sell combination as a possible decision. If you think of the blackjack example before, it's like comparing the hands of all players at all the tables in all the casinos against each other. Now, this would be an intuitive for us. Instead of narrowing the focus, we are expanding the universe of possibilities exponentially. But for AI, it makes sense. It means that we have more data from which the algorithms can learn. Thank you. So with the abundance of data and increasing computational power, how exactly can AI help the bond investors in the decision-making process? As Santiago mentioned, we started looking into our own processes first. We built Katana for the traders, and we were amazed by the results. But do you know what is my favorite part in this story? It's the team composition behind it. The team is anything but a group of bankers. And a lot of them are there with the white hoodies, by the way. So my data scientist colleagues are everything from PhD in physics from CERN to a top of the world cackler. And we have user experience designers. Ours has designed a cyber threat product before. And then we have developers who are, on to, who are on top of everything in terms of technology. And you know, it's actually this diversity in terms of backgrounds and expertise that really created a very dynamic environment for us to experiment and create. And given the positive results internally, we were itching to expand our horizons and go beyond the bank and understand our clients' needs. So how did we build the Katana tool for our bond investors? Let me walk you through the journey we took. We started by going outside and talking to our investor clients. It soon became clear that their decision processes were also cumbersome. In fact, Katana is a co-creation with one of, the, of our investor clients, PGGM, a pension fund here in the Netherlands. Well, I don't know about you, but I will be really happy if I knew this was taking place behind the scenes of my pension fund. 
So then we went to PGGM, and we became really close to the investment managers. We held personal interviews and team workshops and had some very long lunch discussions together. We really wanted to get exactly what their needs were. After all, humans first. Robots come next. So what do you think? Do you think investing is easy? I hope you don't do that on your free time. So what I've learned, it's not really easy, because there are millions of possible trading ideas. What the investment managers do, they make assumptions using their expertise to narrow down the search space into a manageable size. Then they take decisions focusing on this predefined set. But there are a lot of missing opportunities. So we brought in our AI experts to redesign the process into a horizontal one and analyze all possible trading ideas and design algorithms to find the most promising ones. So how did we do this? The business decision is which bonds to buy and sell in order to make a profit, but then relative to make a profit. And then we can also turn the question into which bonds are relatively cheaper or more expensive today, but then relative to what? We can answer this by focusing on bond pairs that historically their price movements have been uh, affected to a similar degree by similar underlying factors. Now, when this relationship is broken, it can either be that one of the bonds characteristics has changed or that there is a mispricing in the market. When the latter holds, the bigger the mispricing, the bigger the opportunity. But keep in mind that it's actually expected that the market actors will identify and correct the mispricing, and then that the prices will eventually return to normal. So how did we turn this into an AI algorithm? Well, we built an in-house algorithm with the following three steps. At the first step, we looked at all possible bond pairs and identified the ones where the prices are moving similarly. At the second step, we determine significant price anomalies, and we leverage a machine learning prediction of the magnitude of that expected anomaly. At the third step, we expect the prices to return to normal. This is a fully data-driven pipeline with no human intervention, and it's fully assumptions-free. Mission accomplished? Almost. Because I don't know how you feel, but myself as a data scientist, I celebrate the most when the algorithms are used in real life. And how do you do this? We build Katana which is actually a tool which is a, one part, an AI algorithm, which is powered by technology and communicated to the users taking their experience seriously. At the moment, the investment managers are actually using tools that are overly complex and not really with intelligence behind it. We want to provide exactly the opposite, a tool that is easy to use but with AI behind it. I believe that this is the best combination we can put AI so it can be best adapted. So what usually used to take, you know, forever, now takes few minutes and a cup of coffee if you want. And I know what you're all thinking. Does it all work? So. The last six months, we've been using Katana. We have seen that the alerts, their discrepancies, are three times higher than the average. Secondly, the investment managers that have been using Katana, they told us that they actually see ideas that they will have otherwise missed. 
And thirdly, we actually see that the trades they have done with Katana are profitable. And this is in a market that is loss making at the moment. I'll close with a story. It was the very first week of the very first prototype when Thomas gave us a call to tell us that he actually did a trade from Katana. We were on fire. And it took three days for humans to pick the idea and start calling Thomas to sell him that same recommendation. Thomas was pleased, to say the least, because it's all about timing after all. Uh, can keep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Katana is a very young project. We're only scratching the surface of what AI can achieve in finance. But it seems clear that the impact is going to be huge. Now, at least for now, keeping the human in the loop is essential. So the interface between human and artificial intelligence cannot be an afterthought. We are entering an age in which communication between humans is being mediated by machines that are intelligent. It is not longer about who you know, but about what you know. And that is determined by what you see on your screen. So we started the talk by sharing our experiences with financial crisis. And we regularly told that the next one will be worse than the last. But this doesn't need to be the case. If the root is our own irrationality, then we have a very real chance of doing better next time if we use AI to improve our decision making. Thank you. Santiago and Johnny Keith, thank you so much. Uh, time for one quick question, if we can, from the floor. Is that okay with both of you? Wonderful. If you'd like to ask the pair a question, please just raise your hands. Once again, the rov roving microphones are here. Um, if you could just stand up and say your name as soon as we get a microphone to you, where you're from and your question, just over here. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Going to the man. Sorry, I'm going to the person I spotted first. Apologies. Gentleman just over there in the back. Th where you are there. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Hi, Christian. I'm, and I'm also from ING. Uh, so Androniki and I know each other. And my quick question is, uh, is there any relationship to the underlying solution of Cantana with a technique called statistical arbitrage? I didn't hear that at all. No. Could you say that again <laughs> for me? Slowly. Can you just put the microphone? Yeah, lovely. Thanks. Is this better? That is much better, okay. yeah. <laughs> So my question is uh, if there is a relationship with the underlying uh, solution method in Katana with a technique called statistical arbitrage. Is there a relationship with the underlying? That's as far as I got, sorry. So let's say the way the Katana is uh, uh, solving the trading, uh, optimal trading uh, advice, uh, is there a relationship between looking at these pairs and what traders in hedge fund industry and the like do uh, with the technique called statistical okay, arbitrage. Okay, I got that. Did you get that? Yeah, I Great. Think, I, think, I think your question is about the relationship between how the algorithm works and what is the mental process that the investors go through or the traders go through. The trading that, process, I think. The trading yeah. in particular. Uh, I would say absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the whole process for us actually started by trying to really get under the skin of the traders and the investment managers and really understand their process, what they're thinking, what they're looking for and what are the key things that they look at. And then taking that to our sort of research environment and really play and generate with all kinds of ideas to really bring an AI perspective to it. So it's not really about replicating the process, but it's about understanding what the process is aiming to do and see how, from an AI perspective, you can achieve the same goal, but perhaps taking uh, an approach that may be orthogonal to the, to the one that the, tra the, that the person is taking. Do you want to have a word on that as well? Um, I think just the difference a lot with the arbitrage is also the fact the liquidity of the bond market is much different than the stock market, which is exactly it's not uh, why the, uh, the whole algorithmic trading didn't move to the bond market at the moment. So there are a few differences between the markets as well. There's a number of hands up, and I'm, I have to apologize. I'm so sorry I'm not going to be able to get we'll a chance to get to you. But you're both here, aren't you? Exactly. So if people want to come and chat to you, you're Happy there. Happy to. And they can also find your profiles on the app as well Definitely. to uh, continue the conversations. But for now, to both of you, thank you thank so you. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone.